Welcome to the slaughterhouse of pre-assumed relationship projections. <laughs> can, can I quote you on that? Yes, please. <laughs> Morning, everyone. I start. I'm. I have been out in nature. I was digging my hands in the soil. I was actually, literally, really putting some grass off the ground and creating some flower kind of spaces. And and I was. I had. I made my hands so dirty, and that was so much fun, and I loved it. It was so good. <sighs> All right, everybody. I invite you to get your favorite random object while I grab a timer. Make yourself as comfortable as possible, leaning back so that your torso muscles are not engaging. Put your hands in your lap on a cushion if you have or want. There we go. Check your breath. Relax your shoulders. And just hold this object that you've chosen in your hands. Don't need to do anything with it now. Just hold it. You might notice that the first thing your brain does is label it. Determine what it is. It might bring up memories, what you use it for. You might notice that you're gripping it with exactly the right amount of force. You're not dropping it, you're not squeezing it to bits. And notice all the things you can already sense. The weight, the temperature, the texture. And maybe even now, you can already feel a shift in your nervous system dropping in. I want to invite you to either with your free hand on the object or with your object on your free hand to super slowly explore the skin of your hand. Just very gently. Exploring the skin of your hand, putting all your attention on what goes on in your skin. It's not about the object. It's about what goes on in your skin. And then slow down your speed by half. And then by half again. Micro movements. And if you happen to come, come across a point where this feels really, really good, you're so welcome to just stay there and let all that feeling in, let all that feeling in just arise. Hmm. And if there are any sounds, they're just sounds. And anything that arises is welcome. Any feeling that comes up for you is welcome. Just be by touching like you were when you were very, very little. 
exploring the world by touch. And if your mind wanders, just lovingly bring it back. That's what it does. And bring your attention back to what goes on in your skin. There's no doing, there's no goal. It doesn't lead anywhere. It's just this. And slowly bring your hands to a stop at their own pace. And just sit with this object and this feeling for a little bit longer. Slowly bringing your awareness back to this time and space and this gathering. Opening your eyes when you're ready. Thank you. Hmm. Come back, everyone. Thank you, Buzz. So Buzz and I had this conversation over the last few weeks about relating and and uh, I just want to share a little bit about myself first. And then I thought Buzz and I, because we have been choosing to have this as a kind of an, um, maybe as an interview, as a conversation where you can then join in or ask questions or share your perception and um, based on this dynamics of uh, the engagement system. So that I just really want to narrow it down how I see it without making anything wrong or that this is the only right thing, just like expressing it from my perspective and, and hopefully that you just have a, um, yeah, a, a benefit or another perspective or another view out of that. So that what I'm sharing, as I said that so many times, is not right or is not true. <laughs> it just works for me. And so I'm at the moment not in a committed relationship since um, almost half a year. Yeah, so I just choose that consciously and intentionally. And based on my dynamics, how I want to relate with people or with women always you know people i want to be with so I, I i would not say i'm heterosexual but you know i'm i sexually love women more so i would want to engage sensually sexually relational on this level with women that's just my preferences so but i would not call myself heterosexual because i i have I'm, i would say i'm multisexual and i have this perception on this brother sister lover thing so that means that if i just want to go with a person on a deeper level of intimate relating and including intercourse then i call that a lover so so fluid bond a deep agreement um where there's a container a created frame create a container of engagement and the brother sister piece is just like as i see that you know when i was a kid with my siblings you know we are innocent we just play we just explore we discover we just like uh it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean we just later have to get married or having you know with friends we're just playing doctor in the bush and that's just very innocent i just you know have you done that? I've done that. I've done tons of that. You know, we've all done that from kindergarten and, you know, hiding in the bushes and oh, what do you have down there? And then, oh, can I touch that? And, you know, this is just, we are, this is the brother sister piece. And this, this, there's an innocence, playful exploration that needs to be there, you know, specifically as well as adults that, you know, 
when you have children and you have played with your children and just rolling a little toy on the carpet, just like pretending to play and that actually you can't feel anything. That's not play for me anymore as an adult. So I just want to still be in my playful nature and be capable of being a little bit weird. <laughs> so not taking myself so serious as an adult. So this over this time, since I'm now not in a committed, intimate relationship with, with, as a lover or with a lover, I, I engage on this brother-sister piece with some people. So I, have, I invite people over sometimes, I, I, I play, I, uh, you know, I go dancing, and then I'm, I'm going out with people and just engage. And that's just fun. That's how I love that. But there is this very piece about the lover dynamic in there that has another depth of responsibility about my own feelings. And I'm, I'm not taking that vague. I'm just really sincere with this. And um, so this one piece I doesn't want to dig in and how to differentiate that and what that really emotionally, spiritually, relational really looks like and how to be with that and getting that really on a clear line. And the second piece is in the engagement system or in the in somatic consent, this dynamics of self responsibility of our feelings that what we have done with the object. So that, I think I mean, this is just like, this is my sensation is in me, I'm responsible for that nobody else can ever. So that's for me too. And, you know, that has to be true for everybody else. So because if I can't do that, I cannot expect that from anybody else to do me that I feel what I want to feel. So I'm responsible for what's going on. And that's so the entire base, you know, the solidity, the, the, you know, this just like the, the roots of the base. Yeah. So, and then we have as well this engagement zone thing, just like where I want something or, I, or you want something and I have my limits and you have your limits. And how do we, navigate through this thing about I want something and what do you want and I have a limit and you have a limit and I have an expectation you have an expectation and I want you to not do something because I don't want to feel something you know all this kind of stuff when that comes up how to how to how to bring that back to self-responsibility and being authentic with this what's going on in there you know and then we have this apex thing kind of just like yeah we all love and care you know we all want to engage in in, in joy and beauty and, and feeling happy and want to thrive and go up on the you know on the um, on the mountain you know want to sit there on the pyramid and just like yeah let let spirit kind of come down and be in the woo woo land that's just awesome I love that so this is where I want to kind of differentiate that today and this is where I want to guide with bus into this conversation and um, yeah make that kind of transparent and um, I don't know exactly how we do that maybe maybe we have about I don't know five or ten minutes back and forth bus where we have a conversation mm -hmm. and um, and then we're just opening up that for question answers and a broader conversation or we let the conversation occur out of that because um, we as well the only male people here <laughs> and I don't want to dominate this conversation because I imagine that your female people have a complete different mindset heart set and have to say something completely different to that and I want to hear you out and um, want to make that really um, engageable yeah, I would say let's just start it up how we yeah. how we conversate and just let me begin an open circle conversation because yeah, we're all so too, relational yeah. experts. Yeah, the the, the relational unexperts experts. Unexpert, yeah. yeah. Relational fuck up experts. Uh, I, you know, I, I want to just throw one piece in, and this is what I what I I, I drove back yesterday. I was sitting in the metro and then I, you was just popping up in my mind about this. Um, I don't know how much I have really shared with you the brother sister lover piece. But one of the main things I shared with you was um, Hi Heather. 
But the main thing that I was sharing with you that was really kind of in my awareness, just like, hey, Bess, have I actually shared that ever with you before I go with somebody as a lover that I want to explore on the brother-sister realm for minimum for three months because I want to know who I energetically engage with. I want to engage for three months and play with before I go with somebody on the lover realm. Mm. And so I just sent that to you. And, um, and, and I don't know if I ever have shared that. And I was, I was wondering how that was landing in you and, and, and what was happening when you heard that. No, you hadn't shared that with me useful information no um it felt it felt really good feels really logic also actually to first indeed and energetically uh, really flow with somebody before you do anything else i would say yeah so that feels yeah that landed very well and logical in my system actually if you want to take somebody at all into the realm of lovers, depending if you're in a relationship or not, and the container you have of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an, an important piece when I when I actually see that, you know, there's all this um, uh, open relating polyamory, polysensual, polysexual, poly everything. And, and what I see most of the time is poly fucking kind of unconscious dynamics where where um, People think they are, they they should have sex because they can, and then I see you know specifically here in Berlin, the scene is just like it's just kindergarten. It's just like children in adults' bodies um, pre pretending and playing mature and have actually no idea energetically how they play. It's just like I, I see that and it's like wow, it's just, what are you doing? You have no idea what you're doing, guys. Yeah. So so where they then feel kind of they're cheating as goes behind the scene and in the background and then they're having all this kind of talk and you know people feeling betrayed and then they're projecting all that shit and the other person is responsible how they feel and there's no really transparency there is no sharing and i just said just like hey where's the brother and sister thing here if you want to have an engagement with another person can you just check in if they're in a relationship with somebody else can you just share if you're in a relationship, do you actually have an agreement that you can honor? Can you provide this space that this, you know, that if you bring another person in, if and you have a partner that they can actually engage and see if there is a sisterhood or a brotherhood going on before you just want to go deeper when you play as, as brother, sister. And um, it's, it's just like as if, so people look at me as if they don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, this is so clear to me, you know, just like, but when I say that, so, so I just want to give an example. So there's a woman I was playing with here for a while. And of course, there was a clear thing asking her, she has a boyfriend and, and she shared with me that her boyfriend was freaking out. She, she's just meeting me. And we had a very clear brother sister thing. And I said, I'm not going there with you as a lover, but if I want to go there, I just want to play for three months. But despite I want to go there or we could go there, I just want to meet your boyfriend first because it's my responsibility as a man coming into somebody else's container that I want to check in with that man and actually, hey, dude, how do you feel about me? And is that what I'm doing here with your partner? Is it enriching your relationship or is it weakening? And because I'm not interested in, in kind of breaking your relationship apart. And he could not meet me. He could not, he could not engage. He could not, he was just freaking out. He, he could not do that. So their relationship felt apart. And now I'm in this place just like, fuck, was I now responsible for their relationship falling apart? And do I actually want to go deeper than with this woman? Because then whatever is going on there would be built on their um, um, unhappiness. And I don't want to create anything. I don't want to build anything on somebody else's unhappiness. Does, does, it, does, it, does it make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, OK. How's it landing oh. in you first when, when I say that? Well, you know, if you reached out to, if you reached out to the person, I think you took your responsibility, and you're not responsible for his his behaviors in that sense. And if then their relationship fell apart, and apparently, it wasn't, it wasn't clear in the first place that she could engage with you, 
why did she engage with you if her boyfriend was freaking out? Uh, so did she abandon him and putting herself first, or was there was there an agreement that now got broken in that? I think you took your responsibility, and of course, I can hear you say if you say you yeah, do do I now want to sort of what's it called scavenger down on that energy of that now broken relationship or not but i don't think you are responsible in any way yeah um yeah no i'm i'm, I'm not i'm not seeing that i am responsible but the thing is what are the responsibilities that i have and what are the responsibility that i can take on and and of course i checked in with her and and uh and, and i asked about the relationship dynamics what was going on there and but then there is no really kind of an emotional or relational depth so that I, I care deep enough that I, that I really have to make the steps. Hey, no, I just really want to meet that guy. And I just really, because I, sincerely, I actually don't want to go that deep that I would want to become a lover there. You know, so, so therefore, I actually feel like, no, I'm just not interested. This is just like completely wasted energy because this is not my business. It's their business. It's their business. But then on the other side, I'm um, with my ex-partner and, uh, you know, we have a kind of really dear, deep connection. And this connection is based on, you know, um, was based on the same dynamics. So when I choose to go as a lover with, 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 with my partner, we have this clear container that meant just like, you know, we are fluid bonded. And if we let somebody else in, then um, only to make our relating deeper as lovers so that you have the chance to create a brother a sisterhood with another woman and i would have to have a chance to create a brotherhood with another man and i i you know from my heart from my soul i want to explore and i want to discover that so are you brave enough to go down that road with me but we have never explored that so in this time where we were relating our relationship kind of came consciously to completion and now after half a year um I just share with her, hey, I just, I just date another woman and we just play. And she is now in this place of having really difficulties with me playing. And then the question is, where and how much am I responsible for her, for her feelings? Because we don't have a container anymore. And how much do I want to care for her feelings, but abandon and neglect my own capacity to play? Because that would hurt her if I just engage with another woman where she would have maybe some fear that she could lose me as a friend or as a, as a you know, or, or the connection that we have shared. And, 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 and here comes this, this, this place in of where do I put myself first and where do I put somebody else's feelings first, where I neglect and abandon my own feeling for somebody else's difficult is to not feel anything and where do I take responsibility for somebody else's feeling that I don't have by pleasing from a place of not going for what I want where I put myself clearly second then so this is really kind of a muddy water how to engage with that then you know with specifically when there's an ex-partner or there is a partner at the moment and what are the feelings of that partner where do we put our feelings first and where does our partner, when they doesn't want to feel what they feel, where do they not take responsibility for their feeling and telling us, I don't want you to do that because I don't want to feel myself here. Hmm. You know, there's really interesting questions in being in an, you know, when I'm coming from a place of love and care. Yeah, of course I love you. Of course I care for you. And where do I put myself second in our relating because I don't have the chance to feel myself because I take, take more care of your feelings than actually about my desires, even if there is not an agreement. So just like that as a kind of a picture, but can you relate to that, what I'm saying, this kind of, yeah, okay. So I just wanna know if we are on the same page with love and relationship and connection and you know, what's the agreement, what's the container and- Can I ask you, Matt, can I ask yes, you? Please. Is it a problem that that she has uh, she feels um, she has unpleasant feelings about it, and isn't it isn't it is it isn't it somewhere very disempowering 
to feel that you are somewhere responsible for those feelings because it it makes her in a sort of okay save me and and takes away her power to save save herself actually oh yeah totally you know and and then it comes from this place of um yes i love and care for you and i you know my i i, I want to give you my gift here and my so my flowers my my attention my presence and uh, i just want to be with you with your feelings as long as you need to to reflect and come into a place of regulating yourself that we can engage again so you can easily spend five to ten hours a day just like to be and process with a person and their feeling you know it's, and um and then uh then kind of just like yes of course i love and care for you and then there is this other side opening up in myself um where am i neglect my self-care here where am i taking more care of your feelings processing with you because i love and care for you where i'm not um uh taking responsibility for what I need, where I am. So then I would go completely in the shadow and being for the other person more than actually being responsible for my own feelings. And then just like, where do you put me first the way how you want me to put you first? So where do we really relate here? Or does it become a one-sided thing because you don't like to feel what you feel that I have to be responsible for that, what you don't want to feel? Yeah 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 that resonates yes please lisa yeah i i, I for, for me that feels like the million dollar question oh yeah yeah and and we've been so conditioned to put others first um yeah it's yeah it, it, I, I don't think there's any answers to it yeah yeah and you know the, the the million dollar question has actually add on the another million dollar on that it's just like how, how much how much are we selfish pricks if we just actually not taking care about the other person's feeling the way how they want to be have taken care of mm -hmm. yeah so where is the edge how much is care how much is self-care and how much is over care and mm -hmm. goes straight in the shadow you know I, I i want you to be responsible for my feeling because you love me and, and, and it comes straight from this projection of um, a hidden entitlement that you have to be there for me because you love me. And mm. if you're not there for me, then you prove that you don't love me. And then we, you know, then you have this kind of. <laughs> <sighs> oh, thank you. Oh. But, you know, you, you can feel the density and the heaviness of relating, right? And, and, and where and how is the responsibility of feelings and self-care appropriate? Where is it kind of not really transparent? And where goes where does it go straight down into the shadows? Oh no, you are responsible for how I feel. Let's all uh, go for a while. Okay, any, anybody else? <laughs> Bus, of course, <laughs> please be asked, be free to ask a question, share, unmute yourself, be as attentive as you like. Oh. How's, how's it going in your belly in each one of you? How's your throat? How do you feel? What's, how, how is your level of, of, of rage? What's, what's your level of unfairness? What's your level of projection? What's your level of conditioning? What is your little gremlin tells you how things should and has to be? You know, this is all fun just to be transparent with the stuff that we don't want to see and that we don't want to be seen. It's all there. Hallelujah. Relating, a uh, super shortcut highway into uh, knowing more about yourself. <laughs> yes, Lisa. Yeah, I'm noticing that when you're talking, I'm translating into my life and my experiences and what's happening for me. And um, I have this 
let's call him a brother, but he's a very special brother. Mm -hmm. And we met a few years ago and we have a, a very close relationship, a very intimate relationship, but we don't, we're not lovers. And he has, he is with a wife, he, uh, you know, not wife, he's with a partner, he's in a committed relationship. And I would really like to meet her and she does not want to meet me. Mm. And I'm just feeling into that. I somehow feel that I'm betraying her. And mm. there's something that feels murky, even mm. though I know that when he spends time with me, she gets a better lover when he comes home because of what we experience together. But there's something that doesn't feel clear. Mm. So yeah, I'm just noticing that I can only, yeah, I'm, I'm just translating everything into my experiences. and. Mm -hmm. It just feels like a huge topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't even know where to start mm. or end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, it's an, it's it, it's it's so rich because when we just or when I look back in my own kind of history and and my own understanding, you know, there are eons, generations, maybe centuries of 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 um, betrayal, you know, and, 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 and most of us carrying that from the unconscious mm -hmm. old patriarchy or matriarchy, I don't know even what Maki, um, that, that um, uh, you know, man controlling women, women controlling man, and finally breaking open into this, you know, we all carry this, um, mm. an, an oppression-like conditioning of beliefs that, uh, you know, other women who just want to engage with my man, they're just like witches and they want to steal my partner. And, mm -hmm. and, and kind of um, yeah, acknowledging that, that, that there is an, a deep layer of um, fear and betrayal in other women and other people. Mm. And I have that too. I have that yeah. fear. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And can I, can I ask you a question on, on your side? Mm, please. Um, and please don't, don't answer. It's more like a rhetoric question. What's the, what's the effort that you could do from a real sisterhood to make this, this effort to connect with her? From, what's your responsibility to take that effort that you could create a sisterhood? And what's the effort that you have not taken? I don't know, but I feel really sad. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Can I can I ask a deeper question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where have you not been taken in consideration from another woman where you felt another woman wanted to steal your man or where you felt betrayed, not being taken in consideration? That's been in my imagination all my life. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't manifested, but yeah. the fear is there. Yeah. Totally, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. Is it, is it a little bit like, I, I, I just imagine a picture, it just comes straight in when I hear you talking. It's, it's a little bit like, you know, like a, like an, um, a comparison about the situation with this man, what I was sharing off, that, you know, I, I feel very confident and I, I, I know that I, I would come from that place to have this conversation with this man. I'm, I'm not imagining a two meter bull with sharp weapons who is just waiting, me coming in his, into his space that he can finally chop me into pieces and kick me in my balls. So, so I, can, I can meet another person, another man, because I'm really st straight here in my attention, in, uh, intentions. And when I just hear you speaking, the picture that I see is a fear of another woman and rage want to bite your head off. Is that, is that something? <sighs> I don't know. Mm. I can't access that. Mm. I 
don't think so. I don't know what I'm frightened of. I don't know. I, I sincerely believe that we are on this, you know, we have, we have all this desire that our consciousness want to go into this higher space of in interpersonal, transpersonal realm of oneness. And I, I project that to all of you. So I guess you have all a similar desire that must be somehow possible. But when you just go down or when I go down into this shadow realm of the un conscious or of the animal of the irrational of the limbic system of the rawness materials or of our feelings we just all want to kill each other for what we have done to each other you know and um and sometimes i see this as a fear for our a, a, a fear for ourselves about the power that we have that we don't want to take responsibility for I just want to let that there. This is not a question that needs mm. to be answered, but just like, um, I mean, this is deep stuff. It's ancestral stuff. It's just generations, and 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 we have all inherited that loads. And the question is, how the heck do we break that free into a conscious realm of engaging consciously? That it's for fuck's sake functional. <laughs> I I kind of wonder about this. You know, rules are there to be broken or to be looked at. You know, it's I I, I had that with my ex partner when 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 I when I when I talk about the system and then then I get sometimes like an like an anger attack about this German rigidity kind of doing everything by rules and I said no that's not what it's for it's just you know the rules are there to just create a frame that we can engage with. And if we're just noticing that this is not functioning anymore, then let's let's have a look at them again. You know, mm -hmm. the same thing with this three months. You know, um, um, you know, I, I I think this is a fantastic rule that works for me awesomely. Kind of saying, you know, when I you know when I ask my 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 internal, you know, my limbic system, my animal, you know, my my rawness, I want to fuck. Of course, I can own that. Of course, I want to have sex. And I just say, yeah, and I want to go there now. And I want to have it straight. And I want to have all of it. You know, when I take ownership. More. Huh? More. And more. And more. And more. And I want to have it all. You know, I want to have the, I want to have the cookie before the lunch. Just like I don't. So, um, or the dessert before the lunch. But then kind of owing it and saying, hey, I just want to go there straight. Is that okay that I just want to go there straight? And that needs a level of consciousness from the other person that when I say I want to go there does not mean we have to go there. So when I say I want to go there, that it meant for the other person that I need to go there and we have to go there. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I want to go there. I want to express that I want to fuck and I want to fuck now, but we don't have to do it. Mm. I want mm. to opening up my heart and make love. If you want to say it from a more, from a more cozy feeling, then um, yeah, I, I, I want that too. But how about I just opening up my heart with my desire and as I sit here and just burn through that without the need of doing it? Where is that bringing us when we just allow ourselves to feel that for three months or whatever this time frame is? It can be, you know, how long it's, it's the right thing. And, um, and exploring what else is there. And, you know, I've, I've, I've done that a few times in my life, kind of just owing that this, you know, this from this passion point of just like, yeah, I just want to go there. That feels so good. It's so it's so rich. And in the moment I say that, that it was, it was just popping like a like a like a bubble. And then it doesn't doesn't mean anything anymore. It was just, you know, it's just like great. But, you know, what, it's great, too, if I don't have it. So it doesn't, yeah, so, 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 so just kind of figuring it kind of out in this place of 
what I want and what you're willing to means as well, if I want that, I don't have to have it. I can just own it. And I can be with the feelings that I have without need you to fulfill what my desire is. I can still own it. And, um, and then there comes another component to that because it goes much deeper. If I own my desire and then the other person feels there is a desire, but not the same desire, just only willingness, is that a constant like a pressure threat that stays in the room that it has to happen one day. And taking this charge out of the equation, this is just art and being so no, I just need to say that now. But you know, I said that yesterday, but today I actually have no interest to be sexual with you at all. And because I was horny yesterday, and I felt you and I want to go into the sky it does not mean that I want that today. Mm. And Oh God, no, no, one of the thousand million streams that are coming in opening up at the moment. It comes as well together with this entire, you know, call it tantric idea or the, the idea of sacred sexuality is what's the intention of our sexual encounter? So there's four categories. Is it procreation? Is it recreation? Is it re rejuvenation or is it transformation? So, and this is how I see most people relating in this sex positive scene and realm the, the the sexual engagement that they have when i say they are children in adult bodies they just re, they relate from the spiritual bypassing thing yeah we just want to be transformative and have this high thing but when they have sex they're just like fucking like rabbits like animals procreative sex without any consciousness whatsoever and when i hear that it's just like hey do you have no fucking idea what you do here what you were talking about <laughs> so, 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 um, and I don't want to be the party pooper, you know, let people do their own stuff and have their experience. But, you know, then the kind of tying knots with each other. And it's just like having, having ancestral, so incest children playing in a pool together. And it's just like, I, sorry, I cannot engage here. Mm. Mm. <sighs> it resonates with, with me and Mary. We did uh, a 90 day hard acute challenge with Christian and Summer. And there was also spoken about, you know, what it means to have sex with somebody. It's really, it's not just uh, a physical thing, like it's a whole energetical, deep, deep energetical thing. And it really, if you have sex with somebody, as if you have sex with a woman as a man, it really creates a hook in you. And there is just an energetical bonding that just doesn't go away unless you consciously cut it. So you got all these men walking around with these hooks in them and all these women with all this energy in them mm -hmm. uh, that they received mm -hmm. from these often unconscious, angry men, whatever. And, and this is what we're all walking around with. It's super intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, one important piece is, and I can just only speak from my own experience with my ex-partner, with my ex-lovers in there, is that, um, you know, we had a kind of a very long history before we actually choose nearly after 10 years going there as lovers. And that was a, that was a very clear thing when we go there, that we have this clear conversation, what kind of energetic package do we bring in so what's your history of your sexual background you know and not only do we have an std test that we don't have any sexual transmitted diseases no it's just like just go further back who else is energetically in that system that i will inherit in my own energy system and am i willing to take that on and you need to know what is the package that i bring that you will get in your system you know, it's not only we're just having a little bit exchange of saliva when we kiss it's just it just you know from an from a from a spiritual realm you know you just you just go on another realm here and and i think this three month thing for me for example is just just makes so much sense you know kind of just like so what's the package that you bring um 
when did you actually before I want to have the first time really intercourse with a woman or just like going there just like so when did you had actually sex last time who was that with and just 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 uh just sharing some sexual history what's what's the energetic package of hooks that you create that you bring in to this what if you want to go there as a lover because if you go in there as a lover it will come up anyway it's not like you know we're just having sex we're going to bed and next morning we're standing up and life is good and happy ever after no this is when the shit starts yeah <laughs> I see you nodding. Any experience you have you want to share? <laughs> and here I was thinking this was going to be a nice weekend. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Can can you remember being in in school? You know the brother sister piece and being an innocent being innocent you know so it's like there's no there's no thing going on in in any kind of you know because we have no idea a long time before actually we became sexual beings and and wanted to have sex with another person so that that this kind of the procreative thing woke up you know in puberty long before having a sleepover somewhere mm with a friend, female or male friend, kind of then having this kind of thing with kind of parents, just like, was well, it actually okay? So you just actually, you just, you just know there's something really pure and, and innocent and, and nice here. And, and then you have this, this weird big people who are looking at you somehow already as if, <laughs> as if something is completely just wrong and uh, no idea what it is but you know but but the 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 the, the you know i, I just have this the, the the sense of it there's a purity about this innocence even with the desire of wanting to have sex just having a cuddle night sleeping with another person in bed if you know when there's no history behind that we don't have to we don't need to need we don't need to know any history because it's very clear we don't go there anyway but being really sensually lovingly on the soul level connected as brothers and sisters and just just you know that there is a that there's a freedom of connection there Hmm. that I, I, I just have a sense of that and I know exactly how it feels there's a purity to that that it's just like my my body just expand and just just it just vibrates it just feels nice do, do you know what I, what I mean this feeling a longing of this connection the the, the the beauty of the innocence and the purity of that and that must be possible I know this I know it's possible Yes, please, Joyce. I think I'm only starting now to discover that innocence. Mm. Yeah. How does it feel? And it feels actually very good, but <laughs> but it's also one way very sad to not have be able to be in that innocence before. But I'm glad I'm 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 reclaiming that. <laughs> mm. Mm. It reminds me of a talk I had with uh, with a friend of mine a couple of years ago, uh, a female friend. We, we, we were just walking on a festival and a long talk. So, and you know, we 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 agreed that we could go to bed and have sex together, and would probably possibly we uh, be be fantastic. But we said, let's not do that. Let's just stay in this what we have now, and it's not bringing all the drama. And, it's, and it felt so liberating to just have a female friend with you, which is very clear, totally love each other. Sex could be great, probably. Let's not go there. Let's stay here, because this is a wonderful place to be with each other. And it felt really, really good. It felt really, really liberating and good and nourishing mm. to get the whole sex thing out. Mm. <laughs> So, quest, like a rhetoric question. So, how can we create this brotherhood, sisterhood? How can we create that 
something? And how can we acknowledge that there is a deeper level than that? And coming into the um, recognition that we're all sexual beings and we all come from that. And, uh, and that, that this is, you know, this is, it is, it will be our life force energy. We just, you know, we just, we're born through that. And, you know, the last thing is probably a mega orgasm when we die. I hope so. <laughs> it's funny when you, when you say that, I hear this voice of Sat, Satguru. He's one of these guru guys. Sadhguru, who speaks about uh, indeed how we are all created and we all come from this union between two people. He said, we're all here because someone got a little bit horny, aren't we not? <laughs> so funny. I'm so happy that I'm not Sadhguru, you know, I'm just like a normal dude who has some balls and just love to be intimate and, and, and connect and feel it all. You know, and everything that I'm doing with somatic consent is just like creating a pathway because this was just making sense because I had, I was so fucking fed up with all that bullshit in relationship. And I just wanted to map out how it worked for me. You know, this is, that, that was this thing. How can I create that? Because it, it, it just fucking makes sense. So just writing this entire book is just, you know, I just, I just wrote that book literally for myself that I can remind myself what I'm doing here. And, um, and maybe some people have some benefits out of that. And um, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I don't know anymore how else to say it or how else to do it, you know. I've I've I've, I've done this tantric thing now since I don't know since I'm 27 or so and I just I just took every stone that I could find around and and um Somebody was asking me the other day, I met, what would you do if you would just lose your work that what you do with somebody consent, who would you be? What would you do? And I just felt into my body and, and, I, and I did, I don't know, it was about two years ago, I did a, a buffo session in Prague, you know, when the stuff with Betty Martin in school kind of fell apart. I was just actually taking, okay, I just do this suicide thing. I just want to know who I am. And I came back and the first thing I arrived with was my, my sensual embodiment of my skin. And I, I cannot give that up. I cannot give up to be embodied with my skin. I cannot give that up. That belongs to me. That's mine as it belongs to anybody else. You know, mm. that was just, that was so solid. I was snobbing in tears. I cannot, and I will not give that up. There is no copyright on that. That doesn't belong to anybody else. That belongs to me. That's mine. And everybody who wants to make that theirs, just like go for it. it. There's no ownership about that ever. And the second thing that was coming in was um, the, the action for myself in relationship to the, the person that I touch, I need permission to. If it's not like, you know, my mom or my, I don't know, even though, but my, 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 my first hand experience as a child, the innocent, pure little thing that could just not speak and just had to touch and feel to feel regulated and felt the connection. So, so that was just like, yeah, but now this is where my mind started to invent itself. Can I touch you? Do I have permission? Oh, you have a limit. Okay. Is it okay when I touch you? But I still need to touch you. And then, the, you know, my inventing myself comes from this place. Um, and um, if, if I would lose my, you know, my job or my work or somatic consent, anything, I mean, that's still in me. This is still there. I, you know, this is, this is, I, I cannot, I cannot give that up. It just, it's the, it, it's in my world, it's the, it's the, you know, the, the cornerstone of a house. This is, this belongs to me. This is mine. Ugh. And, you know, this entire somatic content thing is just like, you know, this is just the sick context that comes out of my head. You know, if somebody of you would have done that, it would probably look a little bit different, but, you know, I imagine it would be the same because 
I can only imagine that if this is true for me in this realm without claiming any ownership of that, it must be true for you and it must be true for everyone. Mm. And how the fuck do we bring that together to make that possible as humans to relate with that, that it's functional without fucking hitting our heads? <laughs> oh, this, this, is, this, is, this is why I'm so passionate about that. I, I know there is a way. I, I, you know, I feel it vibrating in every cell of my body. There is a way. Is that in a goal you have? I don't know a goal. It's just, I, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a passion. It's a, there, there is a vibration in my system that knows there is a way. Mm. I know there is a way, you know, just like when we're getting lost somehow in the forest, you know, Hansel and Gretel, or I don't know what, you know, and whatever the way is, but there is a way there is whatever the way looks like there is a way. And I know that this, what I create here for myself in the first place, because, you know, I want to relate with people as well. I want to relate with my ex lover. I want to relate, relate with my ex wife. I want to relate with people I want to play with. I want to have a functional loving deep, joyful, juicy relationship. I know there is, I know it's possible. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't have one, that's a so fucking paradox, you know? But is that not part of the journey? Yeah, I think so. It's, yeah. Yeah. You know, bringing that's consciousness to it and experiencing it and exploring it and feeling it. Yeah. 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 And, and then how, how can we, learn from each other because we are all expert of this experience of ourselves. How, how, how can we as brothers and sisters, how can we learn of each, from each other? How can we path that way together? Uh, what's your experience with that? Where do you fail? What's going wrong in your world? Uh, where do you have the obstacle, the road bumps? And, and how, how can we enrich that this is like a, a map, a pathway, that this is livable and where do you fall down the edge when you just go with a lover what's the what is what's the returning um uh, shit show where can we learn from each other what to avoid or maybe we have to maybe we have to experience that that we have to have this experience all for ourselves or, you know there's there's so many layers in there that i can't even put that in words anymore it feels rich for me. It feels rich to um, hear other people's stories. It feels very rich for me that you're sharing your story. It might have felt really rich, Joyce, that you were sharing yours as well. And I think, uh, you know, and I got to share a bit of mine. And that that feels you, that feels good. And it feels that we're sort of well, are we learning from each other? Well, we sort of are. I, I, it feels as though we're back in the playground, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I take that as an as a uh, invitation. Anybody else want to share their story a little bit? Yes, Heather. Oh no, I maybe piggyback a little bit on what Lisa said. Uh, it might lead into sharing. Um, yeah, it is it's a whole learning experience. Um, Whenever this topic comes up, it's really fascinating to me. It's just, it's a very different way of how I've had relationships or how my relationship is. And I always consider my relationship to be a little bit um, non-traditional too, but not, uh, not in a way that's outside of monogamy. And then all of these topics, you know, I really feel more connected to what would be polycentral. And I'm wondering too, you know, like there's brotherhood and sisterhood in that as well. Um, now I've found that my relationship is very enriched by the deep friendships that I can explore and have with men and women um, who then turn into my brothers and sisters and as well for my partner that that we can have that interaction, but um, I don't, it's never occurred to me 
<laughs> to take it anywhere outside of that. But that's how, that is what feels good to me. Mm. But I'm really happy to hear about everybody else's experience and um, living of their relationships. Thank you, Amber. I like the way how he said that with um, the pole essential and the opening into brother sister dynamics. And what comes as well in mind is a sentence a teacher of mine said ages ago if you penetrated somebody, you can't make them unpenetrated. And just, just take that in consideration. Yeah, I just want to jump on that that polysensual thing. I think for me, this whole journey is discovering that I'm actually, I think I've always been a polysensual. I think we all are actually, but what I've done from from my fears and my conditioning and, and belief system is sort of force myself to be, or force myself to present myself as a monosensual being. And then the whole realm of shadows comes where I actually feel that I'm not. So you go into parties and you cuddle your ass off with everybody because you actually crave that. But then it's just because you're at a party. And I would love to just go into a, a state of being, so to say, where I just admit to myself, I just love to touch people and I want to touch people and I want to be touched by people. And I have no intention to go... Uh, fuck around uh, pussy hunting uh, shadow stuff uh, things like that and that that's that feels really really good to just admit that to myself actually like oh I just want to do that and 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 indeed not I had my share of pussy hunting you know was, uh, that's done and over and good it was nice at the time but now yeah it's not actually fulfilling and just touching is just super fulfilling mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I have an idea here because we're just having another, I don't know, 15 minutes left or so. Um, having kind of two minutes each, just uh, uh, so that each and you have in here a listening turn so that you get the group of the other six or seven, your undivided attention so that you can reflect for yourself um, and share whatever you want to share that has been coming up for you for the last hour when there was this um, topic going through. Would you like that? Is a, let's say this is a yes, this is a no. Would you like that? Yes, yes, yes. Maybe, and you don't have to, if you know, when, when, it's, right, when it's your turn, you don't have to say anything. Just reflect and just blur it out. Um, so I, I, I take the timer so you don't have to time it. So I do uh, two minutes and then you have another, I don't know, 15 seconds to wrap, wrap it up. Yeah, want to do it? I would like if, to somebody, if somebody doesn't want to speak, do we still give them two minutes of our undivided attention that I just witnessed or does, the, does it pass? If you want that, you can have two minutes of undivided attention and just like picking your nose or turning your camera off, but then you say it. Or you say, I pass, and, and if you don't want that, then it's good too. Good. Okay. Who would like to start? Yeah, what I would like to share is what I'm mostly busy with these days is the concept of um, no illegal feelings. It's just something that came to my mind, and there are no illegal feelings. And so I'm, I'm looking at my own history, like where did I actually made my own feelings illegal and did I suppress them because I thought they wouldn't be allowed or wouldn't be welcomed or I would be rejected or abandoned. And um, these themes are very uh, alive in my uh, 
my system at the moment and um relating back to what you shared with me yesterday Matt, from how to put myself first and the other second while if i come from a place of love and care the caring thing to do would to put the other person first but then i have to put myself second and that whole nut of of um yeah that's really a thing for me at the moment you know because i don't want to just dash on with it. i'm gonna hedonistic on my own feelings and f fuck you what you care you know you take care of your own feelings you know especially when i'm in a relationship because the relationship is also for me i choose to be in a relationship also for for myself so being in a relationship is also putting myself first and then having these feelings you know so that's it's a brilliant puzzle to uh, to get lost in actually and but I keep on coming back to these things. Okay, I have no illegal feelings. You know, if they, they just happen, right? It's not that I choose from my feelings. They just happen. And then I choose what I, I do with them. That's where my freedom of choice lies. And now to see how this freedom becomes so enriching, becomes an enriching um, playground, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Buzz. Yes, hello. Um, you know, a lot of times when I meet new couples, or you know, maybe they've been together for a little while, but they're new friendships to me and they find out how long I've been in a relationship, <laughs> the first question, like eight times out of 10 is like, how do you stay faithful? Uh, you know, is it really all monogamous? And, um, you know, that question has always made me pause and go, well, wait a minute. It's like, to me, it's not even a question. So I don't, I don't know. It's just what feels good to me. But now after all of these talks and um, having gone through a lot of workshops through like the different um, tantric festivals that there are about polyamory, I feel like I have a better answer to that question that it's just, it's not the default. So, um, you know, there's just so many choices. It's like everybody has a different map and it's so wonderful to have that freedom to explore and over the last few weeks that this topic has been coming up I you know I've really sat and felt inside of myself that like had was this a choice based on programming or feeling like it's a default and I've had lots of conversations with my partner about it and it's just something that we really feel inside of ourselves. So it's this really mutual, mutual agreement. Um, and so I, I feel good that I can look at it that way uh, too and know that um, it wasn't, wasn't conditioned. And I really like saying that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Lisa, please. Hmm. I, I noticed when, when you shared, Bass, that you, instead of going to parties and unconsciously wanting cuddles, um, that now you're able to own it and ask for it. And I noticed that that's stirred something in me. Hmm. And, I, and it reminded, it made me think about this liquid love thing that I did a few years ago. And there was two women that were penetrated and with, with a finger. But the agreement was that no penetration was going to happen. And I don't know why that made me think of that, but it did. And I feel a bit sad. 
Hmm, and I'm going to look at you now because I'm looking out the window. <sighs> and I noticed when you were sharing, I was thinking about what should I share? And I noticed that <laughs> I feel really ashamed. Now, the last time I had penetration, which was three years ago, was without consent. I feel ashamed about that. I have a lot of stories about what I should and shouldn't be doing. <sighs> and it also feels nice to be able to share what I feel ashamed about. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Oh, okay. Maybe that maybe that's another topic for next week or so. Uh, how transparency goes and our hiding strategies and why we share something, why we don't share something. And I I, I could just fill up easy an hour, but just talk about myself. How I just <laughs> try to avoid being transparent and and that's that yeah my own trickery. So, uh, super rich. Thank you very much for your um, uh, contribution and joining and opening up and, and, and digging in. The first thing that comes in mind is that Heather has the somatic sisterhood on, on, on the Mighty Network Group. Just please join, have your conversation with each other, invite other women, you know, create that life you want to have or just like, how can you invent that sisterhood with women? It's, uh, I think it's very, very rich. And I mean, for us men, it's the same. So how can we create that brotherhood? How we can step into our um, integrity in our, in our truth? How can we step in our power? And, and how can we enrich each other? Um, all right, a um, few things, some of you know that already. So there's on the 15th of May, a little symposium planned on, on the Mighty Network Group, kind of giving people from the outside an invitation to just like see what this stuff actually is, what we're doing. Most people don't know what it's actually all about. So please feel free to invite some people if you want that. And, uh, and there's a lot of other stuff going on if you just uh, feel like uh, uh, joining. Um, so more to come in the near future. All right, have a beautiful Saturday. Enjoy your evening or your morning or your afternoon and uh, looking forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>